welcome to Emmanuel for this Monday, Thursday service of Holy Eucharist and Agape. It's wonderful to welcome you from all over the world as we come to the most holy moment in our Christian calendar and share together the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our opening hymn is An Upper Room Did Our Lord Prepare. ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbour. Most, Most merciful God, God we, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Collect for Monday Thursday. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son on the night before he suffered instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Hello to the Emmanuel family from Jane Kennedy here in Virginia in the United States. I hope everybody's keeping well. Uh, the first lesson is a reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verses 1 through 4 and 11 through 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The Word of the Lord.
A reading from 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, that is, for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. We sing the hymn, Go to Dark Gethsemane. Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God, and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. 
For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. about Jesus washing the disciples' feet. The third verse goes like this. And after supper he washed their feet, for service too is sacrament. Service is sacrament. So in your phone calls to loved ones and family, to your concern that neighbours are cared for, and in your prayers for those saving lives in our hospitals, at the very forefront of really the most challenging uh, medical emergency the world has ever known. Note that service is indeed sacrament, and that our Lord is washing the feet of a wounded world, of a broken and vulnerable and sick humanity. So during the prayers of the people, you will be invited, as uh, music is played from Brahms, to meditate on the sacrifice, the sacrament of service that's taking place in our hospitals, and to use that time of prayer as an offering to God. If you look now to the altar, you will see that there's some uh, freshly made bread, uh, some oranges, apples, and a very nice bottle of wine. And that is to symbolize the agape. The agape, which I hope in your own homes you're able to have some simple food and fruit juice or wine beside you as you participate in this service. The agape is an ancient Christian tradition of a fellowship meal. The meal which Christians share to show the overwhelming love of God. And on this night when our Lord institutes the Last Supper, here at Emmanuel we want you to be able to share as much as possible. And so before the great Thanksgiving prayer, we will say uh, prayers of blessing over the food that you have on your table that you too may share in a fellowship of love, in a meal of love, that Christ taught us to have one with another. And then finally on this night, I would like to draw your attention to the hymn that we've just sung uh, before the Gospel reading, Go to Dark Gethsemane. 
for, I think, for this particular Monday Thursday, to be with our Lord in Gethsemane, in his isolation, in his utter abandonment and loneliness, loneliness, praying to God that if it is God's will that this cup may be taken away from him. That is where we are. None of us know which of us may receive the uh, positive test from uh, coronavirus. But we do know that many people get that positive test. And we know that, that, that that's for some very serious illness. And so some death can follow. And that is a Gethsemane moment for the world. For you and for me. An awareness of our mortality coming before God, praying for God's will, praying for God's strength, and knowing from the very depths of our being our grief and our sorrow. And so on this Monday, Thursday evening, as we share in the sacrament of service that so our medical staff are engaging in. And as we celebrate the feast of love that Christ institutes, may we, in the strength of this meal, take our place in Gethsemane and pray to our God, along with our Lord Jesus Christ, to strengthen us for the days and path ahead. I now invite you at home to light a candle and to just make yourself comfortable for a time of prayer and meditation. The Lord Jesus, after he had supped with his disciples and had washed their feet, said to them, Do you know what I, your Lord and Master, have done to you? I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. Let us pray for our world.
peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with you. Let us offer one another a word of peace. Through Christ, let us continually offer to God the sacrifice of praise, that is, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name.
as grain scattered upon the earth is gathered into one loaf, so gather your church in every place into the kingdom of your Son. To you be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. 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 For the other food which you have on the table. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. You have blessed the earth to bring forth food to satisfy our hunger. Let this food strengthen us in the fast that is before us, that following our Saviour in the way of the cross, we may come to the joy of his resurrection. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. supper he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said 
Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We celebrate a memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive these holy sacraments and serve you in unity, constancy and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory is yours, almighty Father now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, in the language in which we first heard it, as our Saviour has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
and we will leave the church uh, desolate for Good Friday. Uh, I invite you to join us for our Good Friday service tomorrow at 11 o'clock at San Joma. Uh, if you could join us uh, from the comfort and safety of your own homes, then we can journey together on uh, Monday, Thursday through to Good Friday. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honour and glory, now and forever. Amen.
divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O oh Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword. My life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth. My wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line give glory. Oh, he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known.